Welcome to the Exponential Marketing Club, where we talk about everything content marketing, from just getting started with your business, to growing a captivating presence with your website and social media, and on to scaling with Facebook and Instagram advertising for exponential exposure and long-term success. Hi, my name is Sally Hendrick, your host and Exponential Marketing Strategist. Let's get started, y'all. I am so super thrilled that Pip Seymour is here with me for Small Biz Mojo. Let's show up on Google and Facebook to, you know, hit it from both sides. Pip, why don't you go into telling me more about you before we get back to me? <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm Pip. And uh, I, uh, my focus, so I'm a marketer, and I love, love, love what I do. Uh, we're search engine marketing specialists. So we do everything Google, basically. And uh, yeah, and I live in Canada uh, on a small island in a hamlet called Maple, Maple Bay with a lot of cats, a bunch of dogs, and some chickens. Okay, so I love that it's called a Hamlet because that is just so Shakespearean. Um, can you tell me, is that how it is in Canada or is that just a Vancouver thing? No, I think, well, I know it's an English thing. It's a, a Hamlet is smaller than a village. So, uh, and I've never, I didn't even know we had Hamlets here <laughs> until I moved here. Uh yeah, so it used to be part of a, a bigger, like, town, I guess, or it was its own town, and then it got folded into the other town. Yeah. And it, but it's super small. I mean, there is literally, there's a kayak place uh, down by the water and a pub. That's it. And, and that's it? Drive, yeah, you have to drive 10 minutes to get to a grocery store. and I mean, it's awesome. Well, that's not too far, though, 10 minutes to a grocery store. No, not at all. I'm a, I'm, I was raised in Toronto, so I try to get into the country, but I also like my amenities, you know? Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. I've been to Toronto. I've never been to the west coast of Canada. In fact, believe it or not, as much as I've traveled around the entire world, literally six continents that I've touched, I've only wow. been to Canada one time, and that was two summers ago, um, but it was mostly on the east side. Really? Yeah. You should come visit. You gotta come visit. Cause you're I know. traveling. Love it. Yes. Well, right now I'm not allowed. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very true. So yeah, after. <laughs> after. Yes, I've got so many plans after. It's not even funny. That's nice. Okay, so you're the Google guru here. We've got Google Analytics, SEO. Um, what was the other thing? Like Google My Business is a hot thing to, to that makes it easy for people to kind of stay current on Google, right? Yeah. And then local SEO. Right. Lo okay, local SEO. And then you've got. I didn't realize that that was local SEO. And then you've got. Um, well, YouTube obviously is owned by Google, so that all folds in. Is there yeah, anything do else? Ads. Do what? Yeah, we did Google Ads. So um, Google, what is it? So Google text ads, shopping ads, uh, uh, display ads, retargeting. And uh, now the newest stuff is called Google Guaranteed and Google Screened. Uh, what does that mean? Can, well, let's get into that in a minute. Let's get into yeah, that yeah. in a minute. Okay. So let me, I'm going to write that down though. Google what? Screen and what? Google screens and Google guarantee. Okay. Interesting. All right. I want to come back to that for sure. All right. So for anybody who doesn't know, my name is Sally Hendrick. I run a Facebook ads agency, but my love is in creating really fun, engaging content and being silly because that's just me um, but i also like to inspire others to incorporate what they really love in life with their business content and find that bridge that pulls them together and that makes all the difference and um, you know you can do all the techie stuff to make everything perfect but if people don't engage with your message or your personality or something else, they're not going to take the step forward no matter how much money you spend in advertising. So what do you think about me saying that, Pip? I think that's very true. I, uh, you know, it's a combination of arts and science. 
nowadays. And the thing is, if you're not, if you're not speaking from the heart and speaking to your customers, you uh, you're not going to get business nowadays. Like the reality is, we're all moving further and further online. And so in order to, I, this is the thing I think business owners have a really hard time with um, because they are really passionate. They just don't know how to share it properly online, right? Yeah, I get that. And a lot of people too are afraid to be visible. They're afraid to be heard. Uh, they're afraid to be seen. And the thing is, you've got to peek out from the curtain from time to time to say, hey, this is me, I'm here, this is this is what I do. Whether you're a soft speaking, you know, person or a loud mouth like me, or, you know, somebody who's silly or somebody who's just, I don't know, super inspiring. So, what do yeah, you- Yeah, it's really interesting because it's now, it's, now the way to be social so uh, you know the internet sped up uh to what did they say six months uh went into 10 years so we've we've gone 10 years quicker than than people would have liked but i mean now we socialize online so now is the time to put yourself out there yeah that's true now getting into some of the technical aspects of that i've done a lot of testing of TV type commercial production versus social ads. And I'm going to tell you, the social ads outperform by 10 to 100 times. No way. Oh, yeah. I, people like the, you know, it's funny because when I talk to customers or clients, I often hear, oh, yeah, we'll get video going, we'll get, you know, we'll dress up and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, no, no. Just hit play. Yeah. On your phone? Yeah. Go live. I mean, put, okay. you know, put on your makeup if you want to, but if you don't, put on a hat and glasses and walk out the door. It's okay. Yeah. And it and it works. Yep. It does. It works. Um of course, that's me and my southern my southernness speaking about the makeup and hair and stuff. I'm kind of one of those who sits around the house and doesn't bother with all that because I've got this absent-minded professor thing going on sometimes I walk out the door and I'm like oh my god did I put on my skirt or did I not so (laughs) you know (laughs) because well my mind is always spinning with ideas and strategy and thinking like 10 steps ahead and so it's being in the actual moment can be a little bit difficult at times I think that's what makes you amazing so don't change oh I won't change but I do (laughs) I will put on my clothes though don't worry (laughs) (laughs) oh okay so let me let me let's get back to this screens and guarantee thing because this is this new google thing that i don't know anything about ah yeah yeah yeah. it's uh well it's a it's a lot to so we went digging down the road because uh this would affect some of our clients and and we kept seeing ads. So in, in the States, it's more prevalent. And uh, we're seeing them in Canada. So it's only for certain businesses like plumbers, real estate agents, um, garage door companies. Uh, there's a whole list of companies it affects. Okay. And, and what it is, is they show up at the very top of Google. Like, um, I'm, I, haven't, I haven't looked on a phone but on a desktop for sure, and I think on a phone. Um, but they have a little guarantee in the corner okay. uh, with a check mark from Google. So Google is guaranteeing that uh, the work will be done well. And the thing about that is that how does that happen? So Google Screened is a, it, it's free to set up. It's you just have to verify your business and then it's a type of advertising where you pay per lead, right? Okay. And Google guaranteed, and they look identical. And then, so Google guaranteed is you pay two thousand um, dollars to get set up, and like you have to provide all your business documentation, like you have to be insured, and you have to, you know, be a legit business. They're doing it because, um, you know, there's a. There's a small barrier to entry for some businesses, say like a locksmith, right? Right. Any just grab a truck and get a key cutter and become a locksmith. So that's where the whole 
issue originated actually with locksmiths in San Francisco. And uh, so basically you pay $2,000 and then you, um, you pay per lead after that. And it's important because it's the first ads that show up on Google and they look like, I mean, you're going to pick a guaranteed right. ad over other ads, right? So. Now, uh, okay, so let me get into this a little bit more. So you, you show up at the top, like maybe kind of like a featured area. I'm thinking like if you look at Amazon and these days you got to scroll past some stuff before you find the guts of what you're looking for. So at the yeah. top, you're going to see a lot of stuff pe peppered across there. It's kind of like shopping does maybe. Yeah. You're okay. See, so you'll see these little rounded box ads, maybe about three. Okay. Uh, horizontally across the page. And under that, you'll see the regular Google ads, the text ads. Right. And then for that, you'll probably get um, the local SEO, like the map section. Okay. So as far as the lead, what is considered, like when do you get charged for the lead, is that just a click, or is a lead no. for them to actually uh, attain a goal through your website? Yeah, I think that you have to you fill out a form. Oh, so like a contact form or sign up, like send me info form or something. Right, we're working through it with two of our clients right now to get them on there mm -hmm. because to get on there now is is smarter because there's not going to be room like there's not much room at the top of google right it's going to be i think pretty competitive and uh so i think that you know with google ads funny enough a lot of people don't know this but the longer you have a google ads account mm -hmm. um the, the more google likes you right so um because there's historical value placed on uh your account same thing with the Facebook pixel and ads, same really? thing. Oh yeah. If you are an established marketer on Facebook, like advertiser, you get favor in the news feed. You get favor with the audience selection from your pixel just because Facebook knows you so much better. It's called seasoning the pixel. And basically what that means, and you think about this, Here's how the algorithm works. There's always some sort of artificial intelligence or some sort of connector. And what Facebook does is that they will scan, let's like, let's just take one single ad. They'll scan the copy you're using. They'll scan the image. They can actually see what's in images these days. At least they try to guess. Sometimes they're wrong. Um, and then they will look at the headline. They will look at the targeting. They will look at the name of the file that you've uploaded as your creator just like in Google and all of that is even the emojis you know how emojis are associated with words yeah um, even the emojis are looked at and then they will go out and they will find people in the audience that you've selected and they will first serve your ads to the people in your audience who have used those same keywords, images, emojis, etc., in their social content. Wow. Or not just used it, but engaged with other content similar to it. So let's just say every single person on Facebook pretty much has like 1500 data points associated with them and it's based on what they interact with so if i go out there and i'm constantly interacting with um auto repair shops i, I say that because i've got a new client that does that sells to them um, so let's say that i am always looking at auto repair this that and the other or i'm looking at content that auto shop guys tend to like then what's going to happen is I'm going to get put in this little bucket with all of these interests and keywords and everything. And so whenever somebody puts an ad out there and, and you happen to be in the audience they're selecting, that's how you're going to get associated with who should be interacting with this ad. Now, it, here it goes even deeper, though, when you're talking about the pixel. If people on Facebook are likely to shop 
and to actually check out online from an ad. Facebook knows this, and so that's how you choose your objectives on your ads. If you say, I want to put up a purchase conversion ad, Facebook is going to first look for people who usually purchase things. Yeah, wow. it's very deep, very deep. And people, they kind of, their minds kind of get blown with all of that. But it's how you select every single little box when you go and create ads. You have to know what it is, the why behind the, each button. That's interesting because that makes me more interested in, in Facebook ads. Because I went the Google route because it, well, the, I it was easier for me to get, and it's pretty finicky, right, in its own right. There's a lot of buttons and levers that you have to know how to push. Oh, yeah. But uh, but you really actually sparked my interest in Facebook. If it, it sounds more and more like the Google stuff, but with um, different kind of targeting abilities. There are, the targeting is a little bit different. However, I have to say that once you go through and you start making the selections, because I have tried to do Google ads, because obviously I wanted to try them for myself. I wanted to see what it was like. And a lot of the things that you choose, it's all the same language and you kind of go through the same steps. It's just that the search part of it like the keyword part of it is different yeah yeah like because you pick on you well if you do retargeting you pick audiences and you can build audiences there and you can upload a list in google yeah however a lot of it's about the keywords that people are typing into google and you're targeting those right right uh, and then trying to get people to convert and watching the conversion like journey um, and tracking everything. That's where I think most people go have gone really wrong with their marketing is that you can track so much now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, isn't that nice? Like with the face, I mean, you must get asked all the time about the Facebook pixel. Oh yeah, all the time. And you've got to understand that if you, it's one thing to put the pixel on your website. It is another thing to put all the advanced layering of the type of event that you're measuring based on the pages. And the what I mean by that, and a lot of people don't get this part, if somebody gets to a page that has the pixel on it and it has an extra tag on it, such as lead, like they became a lead, or maybe it's like, um, they purchased something or they went to the checkout page. What happens is, that piece of information, that tag, goes back to Facebook and says, this person is more interested than the person who just went to the website. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great that you can do that. Yeah. Um, hey, Colin. I... Sorry. <laughs> Hey, Colin, um, we're just up here chatting back and forth about Google and Facebook, and we're talking about some new features that Google has for local marketing, which is really, really cool. And um, and I want to see, I might need to get my husband in on that because uh, he has a local, well, he sells all over the country, but he also has a big local presence here and is wanting to get into some um, extra things. But Colin, if you want to come up and chat with us, you're welcome to. So Pip, what are you working on right now? Like what kind of uh, businesses are you working with right now? Oh, interesting. We have a few, uh, yeah, we're, we've been inundated with uh, requests lately. <laughs> okay. You, know, you never want to turn down good work, but it's all about who you get to work with. Um, I'm working with a gaming company doing their Google ads, which is really interesting because they actually can't do some things because they actually sell their uh, gaming company, but VR. Or okay. So they, they use Oculus, so they can track most things on Facebook, but like they don't, it's just so, so, so it, it'll be very interesting um, to work with them. And then I just uh, signed on a carpet cleaner. <laughs> And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, display ad campaigns. So, you know, those pictures around the web, I always say they're like, um, well, for retargeting, they're like uh, bus 
ads that follow you around. Okay, I'm so. going to tell you a funny story about the carpet cleaning. Okay. I have a child who, when she was five or four maybe it wasn't actually a carpet cleaning company but it was an air vent cleaning company and she was in their national commercial (laughs) it was shot here but what they pardon which one the little one my youngest yeah oh yeah my youngest oh yeah the dramatic one um (laughs) <laughs> and still dramatic today. But anyway, what happened was uh, we went into this, you know, it was like a little camp that they would do with acting, but there was a modeling agency and what have you with it. And a friend of mine who was the, I don't know, whatever. We got into that a little bit. And um, and the twins did some stuff too, but the twins were super shy. Like people would be like, oh my God, could you open your mouth and say anything? I'm like, <laughs> You know, because they just wouldn't. But uh, my little one was just really bouncing off the walls, kind of a kid, and very into everything. It's like she lived in a movie walking around. And so they pulled her into the audition, and then the woman came out, and she just looked at me funny, and I was like, what? And she goes, your child very interesting. And I'm just like, okay, is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, you just never know. So they picked they picked her to do the commercial. It was at um, somebody's house, like in the really ritzy part of town here. Colin will know because he used to live in Nashville. Um, it was in the Bellmead area, and um, so we got to just sit around and wait while they were filming this commercial. And the woman that. Um, the woman that was uh, cast as the lead, as the mom, had red hair. She looked a lot like Raina James from the, the Nashville TV show, you know, Connie Britton. And um, anyway, she, she did the commercial, and it's still on YouTube. Um, I have at least one of the cities. But what they did was they put these lower thirds on all the commercials, for all of the different divisions around the country, like the different ones. So that's how it worked out. It was like a, it was local ads, but it was one sh- commercial, and, and then the lower thirds were switched out for every location. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it was cool. And now, it, and of course, it went on YouTube, and um, because of it was, I wonder makes me wonder if maybe they've got updated ads like that and maybe they would be using Google marketing, you know, to do their stuff now because this was, this would have been a really expensive commercial. So Colin, how are you? I am doing very well. Colin, this is Pip Seymour. Pip lives in um, western part of Canada, British Columbia, near Vancouver in a hamlet. As we were talking about before, this little village-like place, which sounds amazing. And Colin used to live in Nashville, Pip. And he and I met on Twitter, of all places. And he ended up coming to my downtown treasure hunt that I was having. And it was like, you know, who is this stranger that I've met on Twitter? I actually met someone from Twitter. It was like I'd never done that before at the time. And we've been great friends ever since. We've uh, worked together a little bit here and there, and next week on the 8th, Colin and I are going to be talking about how to, you know, the five pillars of success for startups, because Colin is really into helping the employee go into becoming an entrepreneur in that transition, and, um, you know, and he, but he recently moved to Tampa area, isn't that right? Yeah, right outside of Tampa. Yeah, 15 minutes from Tampa, but it's been a great move. I've been enjoying it there. And um, how crazy it is that two strangers met on Twitter. <laughs> I think that's so cool. And we've connected in the real world. So I, I always remember that um, that time, we met, how we met. I just remember you showed up to my event. I, I did one of these crazy downtown treasure hunts, Pip. And how many people showed up? Maybe about nine or ten? Yeah, but I would say about 10 people were there. 
yeah, it was really fun. There was a bigger event going on in town, and I just went crazy on Instagram and Twitter looking for people who were going to be coming to it. I didn't really know exactly what I needed to be doing to find these people, but I ended up amassing uh, over 150 people to sign up for a coupon code for something. Oh, I guess to buy their ticket to the big event. And then, um, and then I got, a, a, you know, maybe 10 or 12 of them to come downtown and do this treasure hunt kind of a event with me out of a hotel. And we basically set up like, I had all these pre-planned posts on Instagram. Gosh, what was it, Colin? Oh, it was like, you got to go find this picture somewhere downtown. And you need to take a picture in front of it and then post it on Instagram and do the hashtags that I had. And, um, and they had to go to like 10 different things. And then the clues that they got with each one spelled out a word that was the name of the bar where we were. Oh, wow. How fun is that? It was really fun and really exhausting for me just to set it up, but it worked. And it was a good experience for me, too, because I was new to Nashville at the time. I was only in Nashville for maybe four months or so, four or five months. Great way to meet people. Yeah, it was a, definitely a fun activity. And good. here we are. Year, what, four years later, we're, we're so connected. And... and you've worked together. That's really cool. Yeah. Wow. Why'd you move? Colin. The Tampa because um, uh, I think my time in Nashville was up. I didn't really have a lot of roots there. I moved from the D.C. area to Nashville and didn't want to move back up north. And one of my good friends live in Tampa. I'm like, you know what? Let me move to be closer to, to him and the warmer weather. Are you talking about Leslie? Leslie, yeah. Pip knows Leslie. Oh, you know Leslie? Oh, cool. Did Leslie... What's his last name? Samuels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. It is, yeah. I just actually was bowling with them this morning. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it there? It is one ten in the afternoon. Actually, one maybe 1.04. Ah, okay. That's a good yeah. reason. Morning? Yeah, we went, we went bowling like 10.30 this morning. Right. And so you help entrepreneurs, uh, like new entrepreneurs, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, mainly, most people I work with are new or in the idea phase, or maybe a year or so. Um, That's fig figure out how to set up to make that transition. Yeah, that was a hard transition, as I recall. Same here. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm. That, that, that's a transition. Yeah. I it is a transition. Um, I'm curious, Colin, if you were going to tell somebody about in, about Facebook, Instagram, Google, any of the social stuff, um, and they're just in the early phase, what would you tell them in those early phases? You know, the main thing is um, just to start getting yourself out there and not waiting to be perfect. Um, that's one. The other would be, um, I would mainly get involved in, the, in communities on Facebook and Instagram instead of trying to just initially build your audience yourself. Um, get involved in communities and, and interact with people uh, because that allows you to um, not only get your foot in, but also give you some confidence. Um, it allows you to get connected with people um, and um, get more clarity as to what direction you want to go in. As you can tell, I'm big about talking to people and connecting with real people. So that's what I recommend. Like, get involved in communities and be active. And just post whatever content comes. You feel it's genuine for you and not, not feeling the urge to be perfect. Do you think that people feel this, this sense of perfect pressure if they officially put it on their, you know, on their Google's, you know, list listing, or if they officially put it on their Facebook business page, that it feels too real, and they're trying that that maybe gives them that hesitation to be uh, perfect. Absolutely, um, you know, I talked to someone yesterday. A good example. She told me, um, well, it's one of my coaching clients. She said I reviewed all the videos I've done, and she's been at, at it for like six months, and she's been doing at least two videos a month. Um, I put it up on Facebook. She said, I reviewed my first few videos and I was all over the place. So guess what? I'll take it down because I don't want anyone to see that, you know, 
I'm like, no, just leave it up. You know, this one. She, her idea was if anyone saw that video, they'll automatically disqualify her as a potential um, service provider, right? But um, a lot of people feel that as you put it up, it, it has to be perfect. And and everyone, I think people feel everyone expects them to be perfect. That's and hard I because I think that that, that stops people um, from even working with people. They're like, oh, they're too far along. They're not going to want to work with me or... I'm too afraid to reach out to them. They're they're too perfect. Absolutely, and I think that's what something's really helped me is me being imperfect has allowed me to connect with people on a more personable level, on a deeper level. And um, I went through that phase where I thought I had to be perfect. And guess what? I didn't put anything out there. And when I did show up to people, I was trying to be perfect and, and wasn't feeling good in my skin. So I just gave that up and start being me and most people I connect with feels hey you're real yeah I'm, I'm real you know and this is what it really looks like versus the fancy photo shoots and all the branding that's perfect and all of those things those things are going to come but not initially you, you don't know that you and don't know how you want to show up and what a backstory to be able to go back and tell and then to have footage from it i love when like pat flynn gets up on stage and he tells his story about how he first started and he'll show pictures and he'll show audios and and you know all these different things that he um had done in the beginning and everybody just kind of smiles and laughs because they're all like yeah and he goes i just put it out there and and he goes and it worked and then I got better at it but it worked yep actually one of my I have a video up there years ago I used to go go by a different name online right was and that the Chris Deals thing Chris Deals. yeah Chris Deals <laughs> so, so I started selling on eBay and that was I thought it was a name Christopher is my middle name so I said you know I'll call myself Chris Deals because I'm giving deals on eBay and this was like 1997 and people start calling me that. So I start going by it. Oh, that's and then hilarious. When I got into internet marketing. I stuck with that because of a lot of insecurities and I didn't want my job to know I'm doing this and my family to know and all that kind of crap. And if you Google, if you search uh, search um, YouTube, Leslie did an interview with me at Blog World in, in 2011. <laughs> and he introduced me as Chris Deal. <laughs> I want to see that. I so want to see that. And the content was fire. I enjoyed the content, but I creeped when I was like, wow, you know my fake name. And that event is where I actually, um, after leaving that event, I'm like, nope, I'm going to I'm gonna have to tell everyone. Because everyone online knew me as Chris Deals. So I emailed my email list to all these friends I had that knew me as Chris Deals. You know, some people were upset because they thought I was a fraud. And I'm like, no, it's, this was me, but I just used a different name. <laughs> yeah, you got to just get out there, right? Yeah, you just got to get out there. And so that, that's my example of, like, showing up even though I had a fake name. <laughs> and it's funny that he, went, he played along with that because he knew who I was. Because, you know, we, <laughs> we were... We were friends, so. I think everybody would know that Chris Deals is kind of like an alias, no? Or they might think it is one? No, no one actually, no one ever questioned it. That's so funny. No one ever questioned it. It was just natural, and uh, and I loved it because you couldn't find anyone else. Like when I searched the name at the time, there was like no one else going by that name. So, yeah. I wonder if you searched it now. I think it's there. I'm actually trying to search. I saw, I saw it maybe six months ago. Um, I saw the videos about, about six months ago because I, was, I did a, um, a training and I was talking about being afraid of showing up. And I showed that as an example. But I can't see it now. It's, it's there. It's somewhere on there. I'll find it and, and make sure I, I bookmark it next time. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see it. There it is. The second page, if you put in Chris Deals. Top three tips for using PLR content with Chris Deals. <laughs> P 
PLR content. That's the first time I ever heard of that was at that treasure hunt when you showed up and you and Wendy, Nicole Anderson, and I were talking and you were talking about PLR stuff and I was like, what is that? Now, it doesn't come up at the top for me. You know what comes up at the top when I type in Chris Deals? Ruth Chris uh, Steakhouse. Ruth Chris and Steakhouse. I see different searches, different areas. Yep. So mine is on the second page. Um, actually, on the video, I had to, I had to uh, check the click the video tab, and on the video tab, it shows up um, on the second page. <laughs> yep. Does it say was, deals by Chris? No. Chris no. Deals. Actually, um, it was on. Uh, uh, it's actually on. It's on Leslie's channel. <laughs> oh my God! That's so Sweet. funny. 2000. There it is. Top three tips for best using PLR content with Chris Deals. Oh, this is hilarious. I'm going to add this guy. to, the, can I add this to the blog post, please? You can. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That will be hilarious. I was going to say, you know, the funny thing is, Chris, when Sally asked you about what would you tell somebody to do for marketing and you kind of said, oh, you know, Facebook and posting on Facebook. But where's the first place you guys went to look somebody up? We went to uh, Google, Google and then clicked on video to find a YouTube video. Good observation. I'm all about Google. <laughs> so I was like, when you when you uh, you were like, no, you know, Facebook. I was like, oh, hey, 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 don't forget. Um, but you need them all. I think you need both. Uh, and I do. I don't think you can as easily publish like you can on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, maybe even TikTok. Yeah. Uh, yeah so let me ask you this bit. For, for Google, it's more of a long-term strategy, correct? Well, you can do ads as well, which is a short-term. So what we yeah. sell, uh, our services, we sell SEO, which is a long game, right? You do mm -hmm. it today. You do all the, you hope to do all the right things um and then next year or next week or it depends you can show up as early as a month from today to three years on the on the first page so it takes some work and then there's the pay to play right so the google ads the shopping ads we were yeah just ads yeah well and if the way i look at it is when it comes to the organic content that that's not paid if it's on instagram or facebook it's only going to live as long as it can live in the feed, and that's very short-lived. People can go and search for it, you know, and, and on those platforms, and you know, or at least on Facebook, and find some things. And I think it'll probably start to get even better with Instagram um, because they are merging a lot of things back together with Facebook and Instagram. But when it comes to like YouTube content, that stuff just lives on and on and on. It's so easily searchable. You can always find it. And then you can organize your channel to be this journey that people can take. Um, I'm not as good at it. I have been better, but I do need to go and probably clean up some stuff. But then again, people still find me. Um, and then I also think it's really important to keep your blog updated, a lot of people will say, oh, nobody goes and reads blog posts. And I'm like, yeah, well, maybe they don't read your blog post. But if you pop up in a search because you've got That's good cool. blogs, um, people may be clicking on your website and that's huge because then you can take that click and remarket to them with ads much more easily and much more cheaply, if you will, um, if you're driving that traffic. Right. I don't, if anybody says blogs are dead there, I think they're wrong because people are still making money. I wrote a, a blog post. I just actually updated it yesterday. And usually when you go to a website, people land on the first page and then they go to the about page and then they'll look at pricing and things or other things. And um, it is not often you see that somebody goes like that more people land on a different page on your site than the page. And the blog post I, I created was all about the new Google Analytics 4 and setting it up and of course I had to update it because they changed things um and uh and but it gets us most of our traffic now like yeah it, it's like doubles what we get on our home page so uh blogging's not dead
No, right. it's not at all. And I'm going to tell you, like, a couple of years ago, I set out to write a blog post every week. And, of course, I went crazy at the beginning. And I, I literally set up three months' worth ahead of time to put on my blog, publish every week, and then to repurpose into sending to my email list and, you know, all these other things. And... At first, there wasn't a huge, you know, wasn't a whole lot with that, but I did tag people who clicked from my email because I felt like if you're going to click over and you're going to go to my blog post, then I think you're more important than other people in my list. And after a little, you know, maybe only a few people each t each week would click, but after a few months, I had almost a thousand people coming to my blog from my emails when you accumulated it. And then I went and I analyzed it after that, and I found that I had six or seven blog posts that were getting free traffic every single day from Google searches. And so then I started really amping up, um, you know, pushing, uh, pushing ads towards that, pushing Pinterest towards that, pushing other things towards those blog posts and really bringing those topics front and center and it really made a huge difference um, in that I have never ever had to advertise for my Facebook ads agency it people just come to me but then when it comes to my academy and membership and all that that's a little bit harder but I'm about to start pushing into that um, much easier as well how did you redo your um blogs into uh email what did you what rrs feed or was it like you took some content and then directed them to the blog no i you know i'm really a storyteller and i like to like tell personal stories and then kind of segue into the business side of things <laughs> and so what i did was i would write a very short paragraph that was kind of like a teaser story and then I would have a link for them to click to go to my blog. And that was it. It wasn't a newsletter. It didn't have a lot of busyness to it. There wasn't a whole lot for them to click on. They literally had one link to click. And it just built up over time. And I tested different headlines, you know, the subject lines of the emails um, to see what would get people to open. And I just got better at it because I, I literally blogged every single week for a year. Wow, that's why I started doing lives to repurpose the content. I just, you know, being not that I'm a perfectionist because I'm not, but, uh, you know, publishing something is so hard to hit that publish button. Hitting the live button, once you go live, you're live and you have to kind of get it done. And so I've been going live for four, four years now, I think. And uh, I stopped repurposing it on my blog because we just haven't had the time, sadly. So I have, that's why I asked that question. But uh, it's, uh, that's, that's how it helped me create a lot more content. I actually hired someone. I, went, I started going live. Um, what did I do? It's like I went live on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time with StreamYard. And then I had my assistant actually take the YouTube video embedded into my blog, get the transcript, and then she would get it completely set up like I wanted it. And then I would go in and write an introductory paragraph of the person that I was interviewing, because it was always an interview type thing. And then this other girl took all of that and made it into a podcast. Wow, that's amazing. So let me ask a question about the video and like repurposing it. Um, is this a little thing to just take your Facebook lives and um, repurpose it on your YouTube channel? Just We're like, using Restream. So we do a weekly Facebook live in our Facebook group. Um, and we talk about something to do with marketing, uh, either website, social, or search because um, that's what the group's about. And I, I use Restream and it actually directly streams to my other, my business page on Facebook and to YouTube. So uh, only for a small fee. Yeah, and you can do that with StreamYard as well. So Restream.io, Init.io, and then StreamYard as well. 
Yeah, and I think there's one more. Restream was a bit expensive. We found another one on uh, BuzzSumo that we bought, which was lifetime for something incredibly inexpensive. So we'll see how long they last. But um, yeah, it was just an easier way than downloading and uploading. I'm actually having quite a bit of trouble lately with changing the video image, the first one. Facebook's not giving me options to switch it out. Optimize the titles and descriptions and all those things. Yes. Um, y- yes. Yes. Yesterday okay. we we messed up a little bit and we hit the live because you have to check restream before you hit live and change change what the titles are and things like that. Uh, so when it opens up in uh, eCam, so we use eCam as well. You use re- um, Streamyard, Sally. I was using StreamYard. I'm not doing it right now because I'm not doing the live part of it at this point. The My live portion right now is really into Clubhouse, the audio, and I'm repurposing that into the podcast, but I'm also making a video out of it. But it's you're literally looking at a screen that has some things moving. I mean, you'll see it if you go to my blog, the last two posts are the videos that I'm making out of these clubhouse things. Um, But I'm optimizing that blog post to get people into my my next step. I like it, I'm gonna go follow that and see where I end up. Can I expose you to the same question? Sure, Um, definitely. For someone who's now starting out, uh, when it comes to building a service-based business, coaching or, you know, services, how would you recommend them get started out uh starting with a let's say they have a you know small budget how do you recommend me getting started with that small budget on facebook and for sally facebook and, and google for you Pip? i'm gonna jump in first because to be honest if you're a coach um although you want to show up on google the reality is coaching and marketing for a coach seems to work better on Facebook. Um, so it uh, seems to be uh, people can find a coach or see what the coach is like more on on uh, Facebook than on Google. So I would say put your budget into your website and, and Facebook. What would you say, Sally? I would agree with that. And I'll tell you there's a psychology behind that because when you think about it, most people don't go online and search how do i find a great coach instead they go and they get they hear about coaches they see the work of coaches coaching is something where you're going to go out there and you're going to prospect to find people with particular issues and problems and situations and you're going to lure them into paying attention to what you're saying and doing and helping people with so facebook is the facebook and instagram are both prospecting platforms where google is something where you get found by a specific search yeah, and I, I mean, I haven't done any research on, you know, finding a coach, but coaching is, a, you know, it's not like a plumber. You know, a plumber can, you know, you can have a lot of different plumbers doing the same thing, and you don't, you're not looking for their personality. You're looking for them to be able to get the job done. With a coach, it's personalized, right? Yeah. Um, and so you have to work with somebody that resonates with you, and I think you can prove that on Facebook. I can't believe like I'm out of a job if I'm working with coaches, I tell you. Makes sense. That's how I've I've always been about it because I think it's a personal prospecting kind of relationship. You connect with people, you have conversations. Um, Sally, how would you use an ad budget? If you have an ad budget to, to start a coaching or service business, how would you go about for a beginner? What would you recommend? When it comes to the beginner um, with coaching, I really think that they should just focus on getting their content started and start really understanding who their ideal clients are first before they do anything. Yes, go fix up your profile. Yes, go fix up your Facebook business page. Um, You know, start seeing what people respond to on your personal profile if you want, but be very careful about 
talking about business over there. Just start talking about stories and situations and see what people want to get into a conversation about. Um, as far as advertising goes, when you are ready, you really need to be pulling together your content from at least some sort of simple branding to get started. Um, keep your content light and social, but also do lives, go do get on get on podcasts, go guest blog, go be on other people's shows and share that content to your pages. And the other thing you can do is really, if you understand who your ideal client is and what they like and what they appreciate, become the curator of that content so that you're sharing a lot of other people's stuff on your page in addition to what it is you do. Because what they're going to do is they're going to start saying, oh, I really like this page. They share a lot of the stuff that I'm into. And whenever you start building up a fan base around that, then you can start peppering your own opportunities out there. Well, that's great advice, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, interesting that you built up the organic before you would, you know, push uh, the sales stuff. Well, and I would, and even when you get, are ready to put out like a dollar a day in ads on each piece of content, you can still do that up front. A lot of people are kind of scared to do that because they don't know how to select things um, in the software. But that is also, you can just push content out there to see what people resonate with. It does not, cannot be about sales because if you're in that stage where you're just testing content, you're just trying to get an indication from the audience of which direction you should take your content. And you can run ads for that. I run ads for that every day. Every day. How much are you, so 60 bucks a month you're saying is good, like a dollar a day to start you can for a couple pieces of content, but like, I, I mean, I can tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm actually running birthday ads. Um, you can select people who have a birthday coming up in the next week, and you go and you pick your audience to be the ideal client avatar, if you will, with your, your selections. But then you can narrow that down by only the ones who have a birthday coming up, so it really shortens your... Um, you know, it reduces the size of your audience to something a lot less and just put some engagement ads out there that say, happy birthday. I hope you have a wonderful week. And what are you going to do? You know, something like that, or maybe say something inspiring along with it. Um, you know, like, or maybe a, you know, maybe some sort of message like, you know, Hey, every year around my birthday, I go and get my, um, my annual physical checkup. Do you do the same? You know, something like that. It could be just a hello, reach out kind of message. And what happens is on, on my birthday ads, I have like hundreds of comments and shares. Hundreds. So it's a little bit crazy. That's definitely um, a different, I've never heard that, that strategy. And this is just using a specific birthday or yeah, you can use the birthday thing. You can use all kinds of different things. If, you know how people say, oh, here's all the things coming up. Like um, this is, you know, Mother's Day is coming up or it's Easter this weekend. And people start to interact with that type of content on social media. You can literally set up content for major holidays and prepping people uh, for them so they don't forget about it and then people are going to come to you and be like oh my gosh thank you so much for reminding me of that imagine if you were a relationship coach and you picked out all of the relationship holidays which there are some pretty obscure ones as well as the regular ones and use that as your calendar that helps you connect with people um, right now I'm doing the funny holidays so I don't know if you know what that is, but like today is National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. And I made a protein shake with PB2 powder and fruit and 
Um, and I'm, and I was like, Hey, it's, did you know it was national peanut butter jelly day? And then I just, I tagged all of the, the, you know, the brands that were in my content and I put it out there and I'm just being silly online and people are starting to connect with it a whole lot more than when I was saying, and Facebook ads do this and you do this with Facebook ads and you do this with Facebook ads because everybody starts to go, uh, broken record. Do you think they actually notice that it's an ad? No, a lot of times, no. Now that's pretty interesting marketing because you're just getting in their sphere, right? And then they come check you out. Yep. It's working. That is, that is pretty amazing. Actually. I, I have, to, I have to go to a meeting. Yeah. And I've got to go too. We've kind of gone a little bit over time, but that's okay. Well, let's wrap it's this up. Fun. Yeah. Really, really fun. Thanks Colin for coming in. Thanks Pip for uh, having this chat today and give me a little bit of time. I'll get this thing put up online. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All Talk right. To you soon. See ya. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening today. Now head over to sallyhendrick.com forward slash clubhouse to participate in our live and recorded events. Thanks for being here.